Bird Brain, and today we are talking about 3D, but more specifically, how to use Harmony Stoon Shader to make your life easier. So if you know anything about 3D, you probably know that Toon Shader is not the easiest thing to pull off. 3D is great at doing realistic things, because it uses logic, like light particles are gonna bounce off different materials, so recreating something like steel, glass, or like reflective material is not something that's complicated in 3D. A lot of things about Toon Shader is subjective, right? So a lot of it has to do with like creative thought, like how does the line react, how does the light bounces in that cell shaded look. So yeah, today I'm going to show you how to use Harmony's Toon Shader. And by the way, the Toon Shader was only added in Harmony 24. So 24, 25, anything after you're good. If it's before, it's not going to happen. And by the way, the Toon Shader was also added to Storyboard Pro 24. Today's Harmony. And don't worry, I'm going to do a video just for Storyboard Pro. So let's start from the basic. How do I even import a 3D model? It's pretty easy. All you gotta do is go to File, Import, 3D Model, and then you just go and pick your 3D model. Now check the documentation page for what file exactly you can bring in. Alembic files, FBX, OBJs, like there's many different kinds of things. Look it up, but the best choice is always an FBX. So I'm gonna find my workbench and see here I wrote workbench for Toon Shader. This is because like I said, working for Harmony's Toon Shader is a bit of a different approach than what we would do in 3D usually. So I'm going to bring it in my scene and then you press OK. However, be careful because if you try to move your 3D model, it's not going to work. And this is because when you have Harmony in your preferences, you're always supposed to go to Advanced and uncheck this one. Because if this is checked, it means that you will be able to put keyframes on your drawings directly. And this is a big no-no. You don't want that. So as soon as you install Harmony, you're supposed to uncheck this preference. So because it is unchecked, it prevents you from putting keyframes on the layer, including a 3D layer. So that's why you can't move it because Harmony considers it as a drawing layer. I know it's kind of silly, but it's easy to just correct this. You go to the yellow box here and into the properties of your layer, you can just go to the control tab and then you just activate this and you'll be able to move your 3D model with your transform tool. Just wanted to get that out of the way in case anyone was struggling. So now that you have your 3D model, if you want to see it with a little tool shader line, it is as easy as just going to your node view, pressing on enter, finding your tool shader node, and then you just connect it. By the way, remember you can press on alt or option on a Mac to slide your node into a wire. Otherwise you can just like connect it like this. And then you have line work on your model. I'm going to head over to my perspective view just to show you. But yeah, so now my model has a line with the line, without the line. See, it makes it so much easier to trace. And then to adjust your tune shader, all you have to do is go to the yellow box, get this little window to show up. I'm going to set it to the side here so it's a bit easier to see our model. And then super intuitive, you go to line width. Guess what? It's going to change the width of the line. <laughs> then into the color, if you're crazy, you can just write the numbers or you can just go to this box, double click and get Harmony's famous color picker. And then you just pick the color that you want. And then the track factor, this is if you have like a camera movement in your scene, it will change if the line gets thicker or not according to the camera. And then the shading posterized level, what is this? This is just to give a more cell shaded look to your model. Now it's not gonna work super well on this specific model just because of how square it is. Like there's not much to go from <laughs> in terms of cell shading because it's already pretty flat. But if you had something more round like my unicorn from earlier, it really makes it more simple to see the different shapes of the model. Now, mind you, this is a very, 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 very low poly model. And it's not perfect. It's, I just slapped that very fast just to be able to play with my um, horse model just to see how it would work in drawings and stuff. Um, but yeah, with the Toon Shader, if I set the posterization level uh, to certain numbers, it will just make it a bit more easy to see the lighting. Now, can you change the lighting of the Toon Shader? At the moment, no. Maybe in the future, I don't know. For now, it just uses a default lighting um, that just, you know, lights up your character. You can't really decide where the light goes. Maybe in the future, that would be a nice feature, but not for now. <laughs> Last but not least, I'm going to show you how to make your 3D model work better with Harmony's Toon Shader. Harmony's Toon Shader has two rules. Pretty easy. First, a shape will have a line around itself. So any shape that is in Harmony will have a line around its silhouette. 
pretty easy. So that's why I like the horn has its little line and here the head also has its line. The second rule is that if an object collides with another object, it will create a line, which is why if I take this leg and I move it around, when it gets in contact with another part of the body, it creates a line. However, it only does so if the two pieces are not combined. Now, combined is a thing in 3D. I don't know how it's called in Blender. It's probably called something else because no one can agree on anything in this world. But by combined, what I mean is that in a 3D software, typically, as a 3D artist, I am required to combine as much objects as I can so that when I go to my outliner, I don't have like 5,000 <laughs> little poly surfaces for everything in my model. So for example, if I was to use this bench in an actual 3D scene or setup or whatever, typically it would have been asked of me to take anything that is not gonna move and just combine it. So this little drawer, these little handles and everything, typically I could have taken all of this and combined it by going to like mesh combine. And what this does is it just makes one surface. Of course, I would need to delete my history and everything, but I'm not gonna do that because I actually need my objects to be individual. So in 3D, you are usually asked to combine as much as you can. But if you do this, if I do combine my objects, it means that in Harmony, I'm not gonna get the outline of these elements. I'm gonna show you how it would look like because I came prepared. <laughs> I'm gonna go get the original bench I made, my original workbench. And if it's in my scene, and I put the tune shader on it. See, I don't get any line for anything that has been combined because while the different objects are in contact with one another, since they've been combined, they will not show lines. So see, combined model, not combined model. Way better. I mean, I still don't get the line that is right here, but you know, like I said, easy to use. Not perfect, but definitely easy to use. So yeah, that's all that you need to know. And now that you know that it's as easy as combining or not combining objects, so now as an artist who does 3D for Harmony, you know how to make it. So it's really not that complicated. It's just that you have to make sure that any elements that you want to have a line on contact, that they are not combined. And I know it kind of is counterintuitive to what 3D artists we are taught and asked, but for Harmony, that's just how it works. And this is how they made one of the easiest tune shader to use. No, it's not going to be used in the next Arcane season, but I like it. It's easy and it's digestible. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'm going to see you next week with more content. Goodbye!